So at least intuitively, okay, I proved ev more or less everything that we will use from the text in decomposition. I didn't, but uh, because as I said, we will not use precisely the text in decomposition, but some data here that was hidden here. And, uh, <coughs> but let me discuss more the text in decomposition. In decomposition, and so we usually draw a picture when we discuss it. So, and the idea is that uh, uh, the there are two types uh, of uh, this is a thick part. Which is usually connected except in dimension three, and this is the thin part except in dimension two, and this is the thin part, and the thin part, uh, each component is either a tubular neighborhood of a short geodesic, a tubular. And in the compact case, that's and that's all that can happen. In particular, in the form compact case, the Mendel group does not have parabolic element uh, or a cast. This and the cast is uh, homomorphic to uh, n cos r. Uh, where n is a compact manifold of the of dimension uh, of dimension one. So here this will be n, the the circle here, and uh, <coughs> this should follow from from that. So, so from the fact that I didn't prove, but uh, the d gamma, uh, if gamma is parabolic, then when when you go to to the fixed point, uh, the distance. Uh, so if if this is a point and and this is a gamma gamma of this point, so the distance between these two geodesic uh, goes to zero, and that's exactly, uh, and that's exactly the distance between uh, uh, the, the displacement function when you go along this, uh, and it goes monotonically to zero. So so. So, so all this ray will be inside the, the sublevel set, and if since the this is a union of sublevel sets which are all contain this, the ray to this point, all this direction are here, and this direction is what will correspond to this R, and the, in the future we will use this direction to show that there is a deformation retract to the to the boundary of the set uh, in the thing in the cast case, but we we will use it in a more complicated case, uh, like in a non positively curved situation or in the higher rank situation when we don't know it's a cusp. We know it's something, we don't call it a cusp because it's much more complicated. We will still have a deformation retract to the boundary. And then I will then I, I will prove the details of everything that uh, I will use. Here, <coughs> what is this geodesic? We say that in the hyperbolic case, uh, <coughs> let's analyze a bit the hyperbolic case. So, since I'm well, uh, completely unorganized today, so so you see, it's, uh, at least uh, I hope you will uh, understand the uh, the thickness of composition from this discussion. So, so so we have an axis C, and we have an uh, element uh, gamma uh, <coughs> or alpha. Which generate a cyclic group uh, along this geodesic, and this will correspond to this geodesic here. And now we have the set d alpha, 
less than epsilon, it will be some neighborhood of, uh, of this C. And then we have another set, d alpha square less than epsilon, and so on. It will be a union of finitely many set which will correspond. It's not true that this set is completely contained here. Let's, let's for instance, consider uh, uh, because at some point uh, this displacement is already bigger than zero, than, than epsilon. What does that mean? What? I, 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 I try to describe you how to think about the thing, the thing component of the thing thing decomposition. Uh, this is a cast? This is a, a tube, this is a geodesic, it's a neighborhood of a geodesic. <coughs> Think about the following picture. And alpha has a minimal transition length? Yes. So, so think of uh, H3. Okay? In H3, uh, let's imagine the half a half space. And this is a geodesic C. And suppose the, the element alpha uh, take x to this is will be alpha x. It will translate here, but it also rotate around. Okay. Uh, so the neighborhood d alpha less than epsilon. If you cut it in the hyperbolic uh, in the hyperbolic space, the whole sphere. Uh, with the intrinsic uh, metric are, are a Euclidean plane. They are not totally geodesic, but uh, the intrinsic metric is the metric here, if you uh, restrict it to the remainder metric, you get a flat plane. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, you rotate around this plane. And, uh, and if you think about it, the, this set will, uh, will intersect this horosphere in a in a swap, a horosphere. It, it's called a horosphere. It's called a horosphere because a sphere is a is a neighborhood of equidistance of a, of a point in the space, and a horosphere is, it's a limit of spheres. It's a it's a, a set of equidistance from point in infinity. It's a sphere on the horizon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sphere on the horizon. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but you see you you can compute that you get a complete circle. You get a circle, a, a precise circle, uh, a precise a precise disk. The set d d d alpha less than epsilon will be a disk neighborhood, a precise disk neighborhood of this geodesic. It can be a point. What? It can be a point. It has. You know. If this is a, uh, if it's not empty, then. It's in the only x. Yeah, no? no, because I, this is why I didn't use less than or equal. So, so if if it's a, so so it's exactly secret. It could be, it could be that uh, this set the alpha square less than epsilon is bigger. Alpha square is is is, uh, is somewhere here, but maybe, uh, but maybe the, uh, this point is is. Uh, far from, from a, uh, maybe there is a rotation, so this point goes here, and when I do square, I get here, which is closer to x. You can imagine that it could be, maybe, maybe one of them is bigger, or the second one is bigger. So it's not true that the first one is always the biggest. But they are all circles. In any how, the union of them, the apparently many of them, the union of them will be a, uh, a disk, a, a Euclidean disk neighborhood of a geodesic. So it's, before that I told you that the structure, the geometric structure is complicated, but now you see it's as simple as you can hope. It's, it's only finitely many because the only thing that can make it. The, the only thing that matters is when, when the displacement is less than epsilon. After so then how do you know that there are finitely many in this union? So at some point it becomes because already? No, because at some point the displacement of alpha to the n is already bigger than epsilon. The, the minimal displacement is on this axis. And at some point it's already on the axis bigger than epsilon. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so this picture should tell you that in dimension three, the thin component is at least the tubular one is as simple as as, uh, as you can imagine. It's really a ball, not just not just topologically. It's a ball bundle over a circle. The circle will be the circle from here to here, and it's a, also geometrically it's a ball bundle over a circle. But this is very special to dimension three. If you go to dimension four, it's already complicated. In dimension four, now the whole sphere will be three-dimensional Euclidean space. And in, in two dimension, the only isometry are rotation. In three dimension, there are also rotation, but they diff around different directions, they run different axes. So in dimension three, the, this intersection will not be a, a Euclidean ball, but it will be a Euclidean ellipsoid. In, in, so in, in H4, I will still, I'm limited to the dimension <coughs> I can, uh, in, in, in H4, suppose now we look at the, the horosphere, our tree is the horosphere. And if I cut, if I look at the intersection of the thin component with the horosphere, I, I, I will get a union of Coaxical uh, ellipsoid. They will have the same axis because they correspond to commuting isometry. That I, I'm saying things without proving, but one of them will be like that, another will be like that, another maybe will be like that. They will have the same axis, but they will be. Uh, they you see, that you will get something like that. This will be some. This is some description of the intersection of the thin component in dimension four with the three-dimensional force. It could be something like that, and these are all ellipsoid. Each of them is nice, but the union is complicated. But if the axis of symmetry is necessarily one-dimensional? What? Is the axis of symmetry necessarily one-dimensional? Like, like the, not the axis of... Uh, you take the leg of the fixed one. Yeah. Ah, okay. What? No, 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 I'm, I'm looking at a hyperbolic case. I, I have a geodesic. Mm -hmm. I imagine the geodesic goes from, from zero to infinity, the half a half space model. And this is preserved by all the... Yeah, uh, by all so, the so the here the geodesic is here. I, I look at, I cut it with the three-dimensional sphere. And in the in this cut, you, you, you have coaxical ellipsoid. Yeah, but, but what I'm asking, maybe all the, maybe the group of the, of the hyperbolic element preserves something larger than this. The group of, uh, uh, you mean the cyclic group? Yes. yes. It's a it will always be a line? Yeah, in, the, in negative curvature. Ah, okay. In negative curvature. Yeah. Just, just a line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you write that in non positive curvature, it's more than that. It could be more complicated. Yeah. So are, are you assuming now it's uh, parabolic or hyperbolic? No, this is the hyperbolic. No, no, not space. The, the isometry. The isometry is hyperbolic. It preserves an axis. Okay. The axis is from zero to infinity in the hypersasoid model. And here I, I try to describe the, the intersection with the whole And the ellipsoids share one axis or they share all three? The, all the axis, because... All three axes? Yeah, I, I didn't prove it, but the, the, the reason is that these isometries commute. Actually, they are power of the same isometry. So 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 th they commute, <coughs> and therefore the, you can show that the ellipsoid must share the same okay. axis. All, 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 th all the three axes, but uh, they can be... So this uh, is a tube in four dimensions? This is a tube in four dimensions. This is how you can, should imagine. Topologically, it's just a ball bundle over a circle. Even you can think of product. It uh, is topologically. Topologically, it's this, but geometrically, this ball is a union of ellipsoid. Okay. Co coaxial ellipsoid. So, so when I said that the boundary of the topologically, the thick thinning composition is very nice. Geometrically, it's not that nice. It's still a finite union? It, it's, yeah, it's a finite union. In the, in the, it, it's a finite union, but uh, of things that, uh, yeah, more or less. You see, the fact that they have the same axis still say that this cannot, this is not too complicated. You see, the angles here are always uh, at least pi over two, and you can say things, you can deduce information from that. 
but uh, but it's not as nice as you can imagine. It's it's uh, the boundary of the thin part is not smooth. You see the, the thin part or the thick <coughs> the thick single composition, the thick part is not a manifold with smooth boundary. It's a manifold with corner actually. It's called the thing called a manifold with corner, and this corresponds to corner of the thick thin composition. And um, and uh, so this is uh, I I try to I'm still a bit. Uh, not telling all the details because I just trying to to so you will have some understanding why why later we we do things as we do why we don't just use this thick thin composition and and which in the picture always look nice and but also in the higher rank or or non culture we don't have this uh, even the topological thick thin composition the thin part is more complicated. So this is. <coughs> B three times point this picture. Sorry? This is B three times. This is uh, I I draw it two dimension, but this would be like three dimensional. Yeah. And and uh, and the the go that go to that direction. Yes. So it's a three times the point. Yes. Ah no, because in the in the quotient, this is this is no. the same point. You, you actually you take the neighborhood here, yeah. and you divide by the isometry. So. So this circle will be identified with this one and this one. And uh, yeah. So this is uh, <coughs> this is uh, how you should think about the fixing the composition in the uh, let's discuss a bit uh, in the last five minutes the parabolic case. Uh, let's say let's remain in dimension three. In dimension three, uh, the half a half space model, the parabolic case. You have this fixed point at infinity. All the parabolic are, are uh, if you want, uh, so now this geodesic is not preserved, but the parabolic uh, act on this uh, uh, two-dimensional homosphere by uh, actually by z square. You see, uh, Anna asked me on the break if it's true that uh, that uh, that uh, why why the the fundamental group of the cast is not commutative uh, because it, in the hyperbolic case it must be commutative. It's true in the hyperbolic case. If you consider real hyperbolic case, then the group, the fundamental group of the cast, will be commutative. In general, it will not, but in this case, it will be commutative because uh, the homospheres are just Euclidean plane, and it acts uh, co-compactly and properly discontinuously here. And uh, and so it's the quotient, which will be the boundary of the cast, will be just the toes. These toes that uh, you see here, the fundamental group of this action, will be the the boundary of the cast. The cast is, if you want, is what uh, sits about. Uh, it would be the cross section. What? The cusp will be the cusp here. This this corresponds to a cusp, which will be the toes uh, cross array. So the, 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 the toes is the quotient of this homosphere, uh, which is R two by the discrete group. Uh, in that case of uh, z square. Uh, if you want to, if even simpler picture, imagine the the two dimensional case. The two dimensional case you can see H two. And here the upper half plane, and you have this uh, unipotent element that, uh, and this will be the cast, just this, the portion of this. The element now is one 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 zero. This is the element that uh, preserve and 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 this the portion is just uh, this, which is a, a circle bundle. Uh, no, it's it's a half line kind of zero. <coughs> okay, so uh, I I thought it I would be more uh, uh, rigorous today, and I will say all the details. But uh, along the way, I saw that uh, I didn't plan it so well. But I think I I, I can imagine that now we understand the fixed in the composition. Maybe the best now is to look at uh, system notes or system book. Uh, uh, Three-dimensional geometry and topology, and, and read it there. Uh, maybe it doesn't do it in the most general case that we consider. 
but you can look at Balmain Gong's shoulder book and, and I think now it will be easy for you to read it uh, completely and, and, uh, and basically I, I think I more or less if we accept hand waving then I, I did all the details <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, yeah do you have a recommendation for uh, um, the boundary compactification uh, oh, yeah. reference for the visual for yeah exactly uh, I don't recall that I mm. think you used it for the visual boundary non uh, positively curved I so only used the, the visual boundary uh, somehow to say uh, quickly about the classification of uh, yeah. isometry uh, uh, this so exists for what type of spaces? Uh, many type of spaces, uh, hard zero spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes even uh, you don't. Uh, sometimes you don't even need hard zero. You can look at, uh, for instance, delta hyperbolic spaces, which are uh, not even uniquely good. Uh, uh, what? It exists in uh, so basically. Uh, uh, what would be? Uh, I I I, sh I I should look. At it. It's I don't know. Do you know a reference? Uh, and Sorry, ah, Brighton and Huffinger actually. For non-positive curves. Yeah. Or if you want for classifications of boundaries, you can show me and Taylor. And I have PDFs of both them, so if you want to have both. There's also underlying the visibility. And also, I think in Stephen's book, he must, uh, he's doing the classification of isometry, so uh, I think he mentioned the infinity. Even though for the hyperbolic case, it's, it's pretty obvious, you just if you see a Poincaré ball model, then it's just the boundaries of course. Uh, but uh, uh, in Bangalore, I'm, sure uh, I'm also sure that they mentioned it. Um, in Bangalore, uh, later we will see that uh, there is a better uh, boundary to, to look at, which is called the, tit, the tits boundary of the symmetric space. Or of the, and then there is a metric, uh, but it is something else. You build it on the visual boundary. So it's the same set, but the distance is different. Uh, and uh, maybe Vikram will discuss this next week, because he, he will explain the spherical building if you take a lead group, the spherical building corresponding to the lead group is this, you can view it as the um, teeth boundary of the symmetric space. So, uh, uh, yeah. But the visual boundary is the simplest you can think. Just take rays up to boundary the teeth. And uh, you can define the inverse limits of balls if you start with a point and you take all the balls up to radius r and take larger and larger r, you take inverse limit of these sets. Okay. Or you can, there are various ways to, to define it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you can contract it yourself, you don't need it. Uh, okay, let's uh, finish it.